Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I've recently gotten into the swing of renovation and home decor again and I am focusing right now on this front entryway area, the dining room, and creating a reading nook. It's been a lot of work and there are definitely a lot of future videos that I've been filming for that are to come, but today we're going to be making a tufted couch. So when you walk right into my house, the first thing that you saw was this really creepy little dollhouse that was a one-person movie theater. It was a really small little nook and it looked really creepy but not in like a cool way and so I decided to tear it out and transform this area into a reading nook. Now I have a video, like I said, coming about this whole project as a whole later on. The space features this beautiful large bench area and after going to the store, seeing the prices of what it would cost to buy foam, I thought that there's no way I'm going to be spending like $100 on this. So I decided to do a little bit of recycling and reusing and took a mattress that I already owned that was inside of my trailer and decided to cut that up and make a bench out of it instead because early next year I'm planning on renovating our bedroom anyway. I'm gonna be buying a new mattress and then our old mattress will go into the trailer. This one can become a bench. But the tricky thing about this, even though I love recycling and reusing what I already have, is that it's not a perfect cut. So I have to start off by measuring the exact dimensions that I need. And the mattress obviously is not as long as the bench is, so I will have to do this in sections and, and glue it together so that it creates a very cohesive piece. So I very carefully took an X-Acto knife and was going layer by layer. There's three, this is like a memory foam mattress, so there's three layers. Because this was comprised of three different sections, I totally did a sit test and took apart these three sections after I cut them. Tried to mix and match to see which would be the most comfortable and to make sure that the height was also good because the mattress as a whole was much thicker than I wanted the bench to be. After I had chosen the beautiful memory foam and the regular foam, I don't know what it's called, I took some spray adhesive and tried to glue it together. I knew this wasn't going to be a super crazy fusing of the two, but I just wanted to have as little movement as I continued to wrap it with batting. I also used spray adhesive to connect the two pieces together. Next, I took some batting and I covered the whole thing in it. Again, using spray adhesive, this is actually pretty quick. The hardest part was when I had to flip the entire mattress over to glue the underside. Now let's do a little bit of math. This calculation is actually really easy. All I'm making is a top and bottom panel and then four panels for all the sides. So two longer ones and two shorter ones. Essentially it comes down to the measurement of the actual mattress plus one inch for a half inch seam allowance on each side. Now, I don't want to give away too much about this room that I'm working on, but I am definitely going with a very green theme. I love the color green, and I was really trying to not do a green couch because I love monochromatic. It's my favorite thing, but I also know that I have to push myself a little bit and branch out. So I had found this really beautiful and luxurious deep navy velvet fabric. It is a stretch fabric, which I knew would make this project a little extra interesting, but, but overall it wasn't much of an issue. So I'm starting off by cutting out my two very large panels. I had gotten five yards of this fabric because I wanted to be extra safe, and it ended up being to the T the perfect amount of fabric I needed to cover the entire couch to make two bolster pillows and also create the piping for the entire set. Once I have everything cut, I am going to get started on creating the piping because that is the first thing that I'm going to do. I knew it was going to be very tedious and I wanted to get it out of the way. I start off by cutting two inch strips on the bias, which is a 45 degree angle. I started off with one inch and I forgot to measure the actual size of my cord. I have a thicker cord and luckily I only had 
done one strip so I was able to quickly go back and change the measurements for everything else. So I make sure I have that half inch edge on the piping for when I have to sew everything all together. So this is how you create one very long continuous piece. I already calculated how much piping I would need to go around the entire top and bottom seams of the bench. My plan was to make two very long strips that would be enough for each, plus a little bit more because I wanted to add some piping to the bolster pillars I'm going to be making in another video. Taking these two diagonals, which naturally happen, again, when you cut things on the bias, and putting right sides together, I want to make sure that the tops are flush and that a little bit of that corner, as you see, sticks out on either end because this would help and make sure that when you do sew that line, there isn't some weird staggering and that you actually get a very clear rectangle for the most part if I cut my bias strips perfectly. I purchased these packets of 10 yards of cord. I just got it at Joann's and I got a ton because I figured I could just return it if I don't end up using it I didn't want to run short. For this next part, I'm going to have to quickly swap out my regular sewing foot for a zipper foot so that I can get really close to the edging when I am sewing this piping together. This took forever, but it's a very simple process. All you have to do is sandwich a piece of cord in between your fabric and then sew it in place. Now is the very fun part of assembling everything together. I have never sewn anything so large. This whole thing was 112 inches long. And again, with two sides, it was so much fabric. Quickly before I go ahead and start adding the piping in, I'm going to sew together all of the side panels. So the two shorter ones on the ends and the two longer ones. I figured this would make things just a little easier. My plan is to sew everything together and leave one gap at the very bottom shorter end of one of the sides and then hand sew that shut after I've already put the mattress inside of the fabric. So how adding piping in is going to work is that essentially you're going to be sandwiching fabric number one, piping fabric number two. But because this is velvet and as an extra safety precaution, I am going to be adhering the piping first to just one side and then adding the second layer and re-sewing on top just to make sure that nothing's sliding around and nothing weird happens. Also with this fabric being so long, any kind of weirdness, especially with stretch, compound as you go and things can end up very uneven. So I'm trying to be very meticulous with this process, go very slow, pin more than I need to. I'm also, hi Wolf, he wants to go into his little cubby. Okay, now he's down for his nap. Another thing I'm doing to be very careful and precautious is I'm actually using a stretch thread. This is my first time using this and it's really nice because I can use a straight stitch instead of having to zigzag. I was working in my sewing room in my office and it was just way too much fabric. I ended up moving into the dining room so I could use the dining room table and have a lot more space because it was getting heavy and pulling on what I was sewing which is obviously really inconvenient and it just made it a lot easier. So once I had done the first side of it, so had attached the top panel to all four sides before going in and adding the bottom panel, I did go in and measure to make sure that everything was fitting well. There weren't any things I had to fix before fully assembling everything. I also had to be really careful around the edges to make sure that I got that really nice curve and I went really, really slow and again over pinned and tried to be as careful as possible to make sure that I got that really nice shape.
Now I didn't get this part on film because it was pretty chaotic, but putting this thing on this monster of a bench, I was currently working on doing some drywall, so I had to move it into my living room and I had it on my little art studio space out there. And that was, that was quite the task to get that fabric over that gigantic piece of mattress. But once I had, all I had to do was move back into the dining room and start to hand sew the seam shut. So like I mentioned, I had left one of the edges, bottom edges, free. It would be the part that's going to be completely seen up against the wall and on the bottom. But I tried to be as neat as possible and do a ladder stitch or an invisible stitch so that you couldn't really see anything from the outside. I sat myself down to watch a movie and made as many cover buttons as possible because for this next part I'm going to be needing a cover button for the bottom and top, bottom and top of the mattress when I do the tufting. For this portion I am switching to an upholstery thread. It is a lot thicker and stronger than normal thread obviously, but because I know there's going to be a lot of tension I ended up doubling up so instead of doing one strand of this I did two so I can make sure that it's just really strong and that over time they wouldn't pop off or there wouldn't be too much strain or pressure. So taking my little cover button I am threading the thread through the cover button taking the two ends, technically four because I'm doubling my, and I'm going to thread it through an upholstery needle. I bought a little pack at Joann's and just chose the largest needle or just choose a needle that's big enough depending on how thick of a mattress you're using. So previously I had gone in with a chalk pencil and a ruler to mark exactly where I'm putting the buttons. The pattern I chose to do for the width of the mattress that I'm working with was two buttons, one staggered to the middle, two again, and then all the way to the very end. Taking my upholstery needle, I am going into each of these marks that I have made and stabbing directly through to the other side. This mattress, I think, ended up being around six inches thick and I had to end up using a little cup to help push it all the way through. Every button I made, I had to flip the couch over. Again, this thing is massive and pull it out the back side. As I was doing that, I made sure to hold on to the threads from the back because there was a lot of times I would let go and they would slide out and not come out the other end. So now I am separating my two sets of thread. It's easy to tell because one of them is a loop, the other one are the two cut ends. I'm going to be threading a cover button onto one end, tying a knot, and doing this motion of pushing the button into the mattress to create that puckering and tightening the strings at the same time. Obviously this depends, I suppose, on how puckered and grooved you want the tufts to be. If you want it to be very minimal, you don't have to do this whole action of pushing and pulling. I wanted it to be very dramatic and I wanted to get it as tight as possible before a cover button popped off. And I resumed doing this process for the entirety of the bench. So this definitely took a little while for to get into the rhythm of it. I learned a couple things. Number one, make sure that when you have your cover buttons set in place that they are very much secure because there were a couple times that the top of the cover button popped off because the tension pulling from below was too great. A second thing is to make sure that your cords that you're using to sew through your mattress are much longer than you think. You wanna make sure that when you're pulling the threads through the mattress with your needle that they are not potentially slipping out of the eye of the needle. You also want to make sure that when you are able to do the work in the back and tying and tightening that you have enough to grasp onto. But here we have our DIY tufted cushion. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you enjoy home decor and home renovations, I hope that you will stick along for this 
really fun journey because I have a lot more videos coming up for you. And in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful day or night and I will hopefully see you next week in my next video. Bye.